Here we are with another Friday Night Live, April Fool's 2022. And let's see if the sound gets through, okay. Sounds like it's working. Very good. Hope everybody's doing amazing. We're having uh, strange weather here. <laughs> from warm to cold and snow. And as they say, you know, the Italian March is a crazy month, but we've just finished March and uh, we're still getting the uh, tail end of March weather. In the beginning of April, it looks like it's gonna warm up and over the next week. April showers bring May flowers. Wonderful time of year spring when we see all everything blossom and bloom it's uh, so refreshing for the soul to see you know all the everything coming to life all the animals and plants beautiful thing to watch um as far as the weather, we take what Mother Nature brings to us and that's been programmed by, uh, by governments and, you know, <laughs> they've been programming the weather for a long time. That's why they're so accurate with weather forecasting. <clears throat> and, uh, and of course, that's without, that's with repercussions, of course, um, anytime you know, cause and effect. Anytime you do something, there's always an effect, even though you can't see it immediately around your immediate area. These effects can have, and, and do have, uh, uh, major uh, repercussions, good, bad, whatever it has to be. There always has to be a return to balance the going to direction of balance. If we don't move in the direction of balance, guess what? We get ourselves in real trouble. And no difference with Mother Earth. Mother Earth has to always, always move in the direction of balance. There's no, there's no other way it can operate. That's that's its inherent design. We have that built in as well. But, you know, if we choose to uh, live a lifestyle that doesn't support, um, uh, you know, a healthy lifestyle, um, the body is going to struggle to move in the direction of balance. So we have repercussions from that. And... Uh, you know, pharma cartel names all have many, many different names of diseases <laughs> for us to uh, um, add to our checklist. So, you know, as they say, you know, <clears throat> uh, the more diseases, uh, better designer diseases. That's what the, the point we've come to now designer diseases. There's a new one probably every year, or if not more. Uh, they come up with uh, many different things because there's always uh, new chemicals introduced in environments, changes introduced in environments, which chemicals bring changes. And um, these cause um, imbalances that we probably haven't seen before. So they give them new names. And, um, and we fall for it. You know, the old uh, treat your symptom mythology 
is <clears throat> for the most part what uh, people are following, right? What symptoms you have, let's work on alleviating those symptoms. You know, whether it's with pharmaceuticals, whether it's with isolates, like um, vitamins, minerals, fats, um, diets. Let's alleviate the symptom by changing our diets, you know. And the thing that is bringing on these imbalances are all related goes back to what we ingest as food, what we ingest as sight, as hearing, as thoughts. Whatever we ingest, we will have repercussions. And um, it is what it is. I'm just wondering if there's anybody there uh, if you can uh, give me a thumbs up, if you can hear me, just to make sure. Um, sometimes we can see, and sometimes I can't for some reason. But um, April Fools it is, you know. The high fat diet, pretty interesting concept. Uh, that we need fat for fuel. The body could use fat for fuel if we force it to, if we continuously eat things with fat, the body's going to have to do whatever it can to process that as fuel. All right. Environments dictate outcome. Pretty simple concept, but We've not, we haven't been taught to look at things in, in these ways. We've been taught that the body needs so many elements for it to sustain itself, so much water for it to sustain itself, right? So much air, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Vitamins, minerals, so whatever, carbohydrates. And all these are based on theories from, you know, the scientists. They're just theories, opinions. You know, if we look at uh, the government food guides, which are <clears throat> based on the sciences, in the last uh, how many years they've been doing it, what, um, 100 years or so, I don't know. How long they've been making food guides? Maybe not, not long, that long, but anyway, look at all the changes they made in these food guides. Why do they make changes? Because you know what they suggested from the first food guide has changed. Our, our, our physiology, uh, physiological needs have changed. Absolutely not. We, uh, um, you know. Things have changed um, because of the way we're living and they see the faults in certain things. So they make changes to um, move in the direction what they understand will help. And based on whatever scientific studies they have done, 
So all these things, you know, do they have value? Everything has value. Everything has value, except if it's done through the mighty dollar. <laughs> If the science is persuaded to go one way because of the dollar, then it's gatekeeping. And that's, my friends, is most of the sciences out there. So I guess there's nobody out there. I'll give it a few more minutes and then uh, we'll call it a close for the night if nobody's there. Um, we do these calls for Q and A and people to share their stories, inspirations, experiences. been quite a journey the last 32 years now. It's been a long time. Feels like I started yesterday to some, some sense. And I look back on all the things, all the experiences I went through. My goodness. It's quite numerous. That's why um, we're able to see things in a different light. Jennifer, hi. We are told we need X, Y, Z, diversity in all things, plants for vermon. Vermon. Got microbes made to feel like we are always missing something. But when I just eat melons, for example, I feel like simplicity is key to, so the variety of these mono meal feels like a paradox. What do you think? Absolutely agree. Look at all the wild animal kingdom, wild animal kingdom that has not been influenced by humans, by men, which is very, rare these days <laughs> if we look in the deep sea maybe it's animals eat mainly what mono meals if humans feed animals humans feed animals what they believe the animals needs are which is not you know necessarily what's in the wild so mono eating is the most efficient way for the body to process and function from that process. It's the easiest, it's the least stressful. You know, and of course, when we go to the least obstructive foods for humans, which is fruit, it's very, very easy on the body when we do mono meals. So yeah, it's absolutely um, one of the best ways to consume food when we choose to eat, mono eating. And if we look at people who shun mono eating, for example, um, you know, we Italians, <laughs> Some of us were big pasta eaters, for example. And some Italians, they would eat pasta every single day. Every day. You know, same thing every single day. But they don't consider 
you know, like a mono eating. Yeah, they may have other things, but I'm just saying some people just have a plate of pasta and that's it with their whatever, tomato sauce, whatever. And they have that and they're done. And that's their meal. So, you know, it's simplicity, you know, mono eating. When you start mixing all the things is when you have problems in processing digestion, right? Hi, Barbara. And it causes all kinds of things, gas and fermentation gas, right? And, and uh, we get uh, all kinds of issues from that, you know? Same from, from my, you know, for myself, eating, uh, you know, when I mix too many things, man, you know, I, I feel it a lot because my body's become very sensitive over the years. And mono, mono eating is, uh, is the easiest on my body, by far. You know, just eat one fruit, let the body handle that, and away you go. And then, you know, later on, if you still want to eat, you know, you can have something else, so you can have more of the same. But it's so much easier when we do that, as you've noticed yourself, uh, Jennifer. You don't need to, you don't need anybody to convince you because if you've been doing that for a while, you can see how easy it is on the body. Now, the only thing missing from our diets is what? Fasting. <laughs> fasting diet, lifestyle. You know, make the fasting as part of the lifestyle and choose to eat occasionally for fun. And sometimes we're gonna eat a little more. It's okay. As long as we're okay with the level of obstructive, obstructiveness we've chosen, we, and we're okay to you know, live with the consequences of whatever we eat, you know, then there's, you know, we don't point fingers at anybody and you know, whatever happens, we're okay with that. And that's all we can do. We can't force anything upon anybody else. It just doesn't work. Continue mono eating. How long have you been mono eating, Jennifer? You know, all these needs of X, Y, Z, X, Y, X, whatever. These are theories. Theories. You know, we look at uh, the bison which we call the buffalo growing up, that it only eats grass. Two years, awesome, Jennifer. Only eats grass. And it builds that massive body, huge, thick skull. How do I know it's thick? Because uh, I remember someone who was having a wild bison on his farm told me a story that, you know, when he used to kill one for as food, one time the bullet hit the skull and ricocheted right off. He said it was unreal how strong the skull is. So he had to shoot it in a certain place to kill it, you know, I'm not gonna say if it's right or wrong or whatever. There's people who choose to eat meat and, you know, if you're gonna eat it, the best way is to do all the processing yourself, kill it, skin it, gut it, blah, blah, blah. You know. So there's an animal who eats only grass. It doesn't eat anything else but grass. Grass is its diet. And that's a mono 
meal for a lifetime, right? Doesn't sway away from eating grass. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. If we look at carnivores, right? There's some carnivores who, you know, they only eat flesh. And um, there's uh, uh, a lot of the carnivores will, when they do the kill, they will go for the gut. And in the gut is what? Undigested or partially digested um, vegetation if they're eating uh, a vegetarian type animal who lives on plants, a plant eating animal. They go for the gut and they'll be, you know, undigested, partially digested, maybe fully digested food throughout the GI tract. And that's where they go for first. When you look at scavengers, um, I don't know how much hunting hyenas do. They're mostly scavengers and they, and they steal uh, vultures. And there's, uh, there's many other uh, scavengers. I don't know all the names of them, but um, some of these scavengers, right? They're, get, they're gonna eat the leftovers and that's all they eat. That's what designed, that's what designed for, to keep all the balance in nature. It, it takes care of, um, all the carcass, so it just have, doesn't have to sit and, and just rot in the ground. Uh, these animals will take care of it, and then it gets processed through the animals and gets released as fertilizer for the land. So, yeah, you have your fruit eaters, you have your plant eaters. Uh, you know, the, some fruit eaters have some leafy greens. Some fruit eaters don't eat any leafy greens. Some fruit eaters um, have um, some nuts. Some fruit eaters have some meat. Um, you know, the chimpanzees, I don't know how that happened, but uh, you know, they've been, um, they've been shown that they go hunting and they kill these other type monkeys and they eat them. Now, was that a natural thing from these animals or, or because humans have invaded their territories and made changes to their territories, their habitat, they are forced to do things differently. And also it's like monkey see monkey do. They've watched, you know, humans kill and eat and maybe they're duplicating that, but in a higher order of things, there's the emotion. Man's emotion runs through the animal kingdom. So they don't even have to see it. It's like the hundredth monkey syndrome where there was monkeys on an island who started washing their uh, root vegetables or something it was. They washed the sand off that they've never done before. And then other monkeys in a completely different part of the world started doing the same thing, which they never have been seen doing before. So how does that happen? Well, it's in the fields, in the fields of plath, we call it. That plasma love, always flowing, is full of the information, that's the true information highway. Forget about the internet. The PLAF is the true information highway, which runs through all our souls. And we can tap into that consciously or unconsciously. We can learn to tap into it consciously. Unconsciously, we're always tapped into it. We can't separate from that. That plasma love is always flowing. We, we're continuously um, interacting with that and we can make the choice to learn how to tap into it consciously. Jennifer, the only reason fear comes up that I need more variety of fruits 
and not just the same fruit over and over is because it's not growing in my backyard. I don't know the degradation, uh, degradation, 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 sorry, chemicals, glyphosate, et cetera, of the soil. So it's like helping, uh, hedging my bets. Um, this is, be, Jennifer, because we, we, we've been brought up to believe that we need to eat. And um, our, the body is lacking, so we need to eat. Um, we've... Um, We've pretty much smashed that uh, that belief system. Um, master fasting. You know, many people have gone many months and much longer, you know, years on the master fast protocol, which is everything dead, cooked juice, plasma pudding, charcoal, psyllium husk. So no seeds, it's just a husk and clay. And then herbal tinctures and herbal kidney tea, right? So in nutritionally, what's in there? <laughs> it's not much. So how do we go on for months and months and months and then we start seeing miraculous regeneration happen heal miraculous healing happen you know with no nutrition where does that source of information come from if we're not eating. It comes from the plaf, plasma law always flowing. And the most efficient, best way I have found, and we've seen many others agree, to access that information highway is through fasting. So the fear is how we are controlled just think, think. If we never, have, if we never have to eat again, how much more free you would be? How much time every day you would save? You know, eating mono meals, you're already saving mono fruit. You're already saving a huge amount of time in shopping and eating and consuming it. You know, for, but most people are not doing that, right? They're, they're shopping a variety of fruits and fruit, vegetables and their meats and cheeses and whatever. And then they go home and then they have to prepare it all, take all the time cleaning it and so on and so forth. So think of how much time you're saving just on that by going mono fruit eating. And think of how much time more you save if you don't have to eat at all. <laughs> it's total freedom. Total freedom, you know, we humans on this planet are the only species that have to work and pay to live and to die. We also have to pay to die. You gotta bury yourself. Somebody's gotta pay for your, you know, your burial or your cremation or whatever. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know, but the little we do know, it, um, change, it has to change our belief system because what we've been told that you're gonna die without water for three days, you know, so many people have smashed that one. You're not going to die with a little water for three days. 
you know, if you're in a very severe imbalanced state on heavy duty pharmaceuticals and, you know, you eat, you know, crappy food and you don't drink water, yeah, you probably be dead in three days if you don't drink water, right? You don't eat because the terminology we use is drowning in your own filth. Drowning in your own filth. You know, I don't mean any disrespect or anything, but we, we all have filth within our bodies. Um, we accumulate through, you know, our thoughts, our uh, deeds, and, you know, our diets. So, when we choose to live a fasting lifestyle, we can continuously purge all this collection that we've done over our lifetime and lifetimes of our ancestral uh, emotions, which are affecting us because we're part of that. We can't separate. So has the food supply um, over the last 50 to 100 years been degraded? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no comparison. But, you know, to say that spinach today has 50 times less minerals than that those of 50 years ago or so. Maybe. And we need to, um, you know, eat so much times more to get the same nutrition. I don't see that anymore. I used to believe that. I used to believe it. I used to believe that science. But um, all the evidence of what we've seen does not support that. Because when we remove everything, we find resolution, we find healing, we find regeneration. So, What's lacking? If there's anything lacking, how can that be possible? If you remove everything, how can it be possible? Well, it's possible because why? Because we're tapping into plaf. Plasma love always flowing. And, excuse me, <laughs> long day. If we, you know, tap into that, we're we're, uh, we're going to be ha happy campers. Plasma love always flowing. Uh, Jennifer, yeah, when I did over 223 days of just juice and fasting and not needing to sleep more than two hours every night, I knew nothing would ever be better. But the isolation is hard. Ah, it's a long time. And just juice. Long time. But um, that shows that shows what that if anything they've told us was true, you'd be dead. Right? Be dead. So, there's really um, much that we need to allow ourselves 
to change our belief systems. Just allow it to happen. And we can see that as we go along and we are fasting more and more and more, we see the magic starting to happen. The isolation, well, yeah, you know, our societies are not geared to support fasting lifestyles. We had, you know, parents calling the police on their grown adult children because they lost weight from fasting. How's that? So, you know, if you're, if you're going to be fasting, what did the prophets say about fasting? Don't tell anybody. Do it on your own. In silence. And do it for the spirit. Don't do it for the body. If you're fasting for the body to fix something with the body, you've already started with the wrong step. Well, maybe not the wrong, but you, you started with a difficult step. Hi, Mary. And that difficult step can move us in the wrong directions. If we're looking for balance, we're not going to be going in balance. <laughs> so, you know, our whole belief system, it's very, very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Our belief, our belief system is obstructive. It, it, it puts us in the chains, the chain and ball. It ties us down. Hi, Elaine. And when we're tied down, there's no freedom. So, cut the ball and chain off. Start making the decisions too fast for the spirit, you know, for the divine. That's what uh, the prophets have taught. Fasting is very, very important part of a spiritual life. The first part is honoring, you know, and worshiping uh, the wonderful creator, the divine creator. It's an honor. To be humbled in the presence of the divine and to see that maybe we actually have no power. <laughs> Only what is allowed. We have free will with consequences for all the choices we make. But um, I've, uh, I've always loved fasting. And um, it's just, um, 
it puts you in that wonderful space. Right, Marco? It puts you in that wonderful space when you're not having to, you know, do the eating and then the digestion process and elimination for that. You know, what I love about Master Fast is we have the best of both worlds. You know, the things that we're doing, you know, we're taking our, uh, our juice, which is lovely to drink. It's very satisfying. We're having our tinctures and tea, you know, a cup of tea with our tinctures and a shot of booze. <laughs> and then uh, we have our plasma pudding, which is like a dessert, which has no nutritional value. Right, from by the standards of nutrition. Some minerals in the clay, charcoal's burnt to hell. <laughs> Charcoal and the uh, psyllium husks, just husk of a seed, which are not digestible. So, with all that, you know, we have the best of both worlds. We're mimicking eating the plasma pudding, unless you put it in a drink and make your smoothie kind of thing, make a thick, make a thick juice. <laughs> Depends how you do it. I like, to, I like to eat it thick, minimal liquid, so it just can mix, just enough liquid, and eat it that way. You know. Sometimes put a little bit of maple syrup. It's like having a cereal dessert. <laughs> but none of these things stop us from being in the elimination state, which is the fasting state, which is amazing. Because the only true fast is what? Dry fast. Dry fast. When you don't consume anything, that's the true fast. Everything else is mimicking, trying to mimic a fast. And that's what we're doing. You know, Master Fast is a glorified dry fast, and we're supporting everything for the dry fast. Everything is to support the dry fast. Everything we do. And how do we support the dry fast? Well, we need to clear the GI tract, the plasma vacuum tube. If it's all plugged up, the fasting is going to be more difficult, the dry fast. When it's clear, it's much easier. And, you know, we would have thought the opposite, you know, people think, you know, well, they got to fast and they got to eat their last meal and, you know, pig out, <laughs> build up. We see uh, bears do that before hibernation. They just eat and eat and eat. And we're not bears. <laughs> and Elaine, I always dehydrate mine a bit after mixing with some juice to make a plasma pancake. Yeah, there you go. So many different ideas that people have done. They've made uh, plasma pudding leathers. <laughs> it was, uh, we had some fun. Uh, I've seen, you know, many people enjoy eating the plasma pudding. Some people can't stand it. Uh, it's no big deal. So just stir it in and drink it down, get it over with. But if you learn to enjoy it, you know, humans can acquire a taste for anything. And if you don't believe me, you can go do a tour around the whole world, visit all the different tribes and cultures and you will see humans eat anything. Anything that moves, it doesn't move, it's on a plant or animal kingdom. Humans eat anything. So if it tastes great for somebody else, but it doesn't taste great for us, what's the difference? 
The difference is how we, they've been brought up, how we've been brought up. You know, it's, that's the only difference. And because they enjoy what they're eating and we enjoy what we're eating. But we look at what they're eating, we may be squeamish, maybe some rats or some snake or some whatever. <laughs> Grasshoppers, new big thing is uh, bugs. Get your protein eating bugs. Yeah. Chocolate covered ants. Interesting stuff. So yeah, belief systems, our belief systems, they get in the way for a big most part, and uh, it's, it's uh, society supports these belief systems for the most part, as we've seen, especially in the last two years. You know, even though the belief system that's been created is false, it doesn't matter. Once it's ingested and programmed, good luck in trying to change it from, uh, good luck in trying to, you know, change people who've been eating a certain way their whole lives. Not an easy task. Unless you give them education, they see the light of things and they understand, you know, that there are better ways. Otherwise, um, you're not gonna see much happen of people changing. Um, you know, people who've master fasted then miraculously and then choose to go back to an obstructive lifestyle. And that's okay, but um, they're not happy campers when they go back, at, you know, for who knows how long, uh, because they're shocking the body from a plasmatic field state to back to a heavy matter state. It's a big shock for the body. You know, if you have to do that, you gotta do it slowly, let allow the, um, mucous membrane coating to be built back up again. You gotta do that slowly, because that's a protection layer for matter state food. When you're on fields, you don't need that. Jennifer Salt is wild. I cannot believe the difference. If I were to put a grain of salt in my mouth now, it feels like poison. Yeah, once you stay away from these things, the body doesn't need these things. You know, the salt, what does it do? It just allows the body to hold on more fluid. And right away, you let go of salt, you'll see you will uh, lose weight because you lose a lot of that excess fluid. And, um, you know, this is the thing about, you know, drinking water. Um, we, you know, we don't suggest drinking water, but if somebody's eating an obstructive life style, diet they're gonna have they gotta have some water um they gotta have some water otherwise they put their body in trouble the body needs that extra fluid to hold on to to dilute all the poisons from the diet you know and salt is uh can can be very toxic depending on the amounts I think it was the Chinese used to use, I can't remember how much salt, a few tablespoons of salt to commit suicide if they were caught or whatever. So yeah. Interesting stuff. I stood away from salt for many, 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 many years. And yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, um, does the body require these things? Because we're told we need salt and iodine and all this stuff. 
Well, if we look at the animal kingdom, it'll give us a lot of answers. It's, you know, but it, it doesn't give us a complete picture because the animal kingdom, you know, we humans have dominion over the animal kingdom, not to eat them, I don't think, but <laughs> to uh, look over, over them and after them and after their environments. We're supposed to be care, caretakers of the environments of the animal kingdom and Mother Earth. So the animal kingdom, if we look at fruitarians, uh, the um, primates, big percentage of primates are fruit eaters. Not all, big percentage. They're mostly fruit eaters. And from what I've read, the most intelligent ones are the ones who eat the most fruit. You know, there's some who eat fruits and green leaves and stuff. And some will eat some nuts, like I said earlier. And some of them go hunting. Do they eat salt? Do they put salt or they prepare their fruits? They're raw foodists, right? They eat uh, everything in their natural raw state. Only humans cook their food. Maybe there's some, some chimpanzees somewhere <laughs> learned how to make a fire and cooks his food now. I don't know. It could be. <laughs> you never know. You never know. That would be funny, but um, it's because the cooked food being brought to higher, higher order <laughs> is much more addictive. And um, Jennifer, only humans preserve their food as well, yeah. They only cook their food, they only preserve their food. They only refrigerate and, you know, uh, ferment. Instead of eating its natural state. Um, I'm sure when there's you know natural forest fires, um, there's you no know, dead carcasses and uh, burnt plant matter, or whatever. And animals have their go with that whenever that happens. But it's not something that is a regular thing. It's, it's on a rare occasion, and you know there may be some carcasses that are cooked, and animals will, will have that and eat it, and they will never forget the taste. You'll never forget the taste because it's so addictive cooked food. All cooked food is addictive. So we're interesting times, big changes on the planet. Um, We need to be flexible. You know, when we're not flexible, we, it's like a stick that's not flexible and can break. We need to be able to bend. The more we can bend, the more we can um, be resilient to everything that is thrown at us from our environments. Most of all, the biggest challenge is always emotions, relationships with emotions. Huge, huge challenge for uh, many, many people. And uh, we do the best we can in the situation we're in. The understanding that everything is exactly the way it should be. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen. And in that, there's a learning lesson why we're exposed to these things, these events, because we're supposed to learn something from it. And if we don't learn, the lesson is repeated. You fail your test, you're going to redo it. <clears throat> so 
so with that said, I'm going to go back to my mama. It's, um, it's a lot of work, but um, it is an honor, but it is a lot of work. And uh, we salute the uh, caregivers who take care of older people and disabled people. It's a really tough job, really tough, a lot of challenges. So yeah, so we thank everybody for joining. We'll uh, see you on the page. We'll see you on the next Wednesday uh, afternoon Facebook call. And we hope you have a pleasant evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. Um, keep the plasma love always flowing. Let's learn to go within more and more. Let's start elevating souls more and more. Let's continue depositing the mass fast plasma bank, peace, love, and you know, gratitude. You know, and uh, move in the direction of peace, balance, correct conduct, so that we can all, all be in that wonderful state and enjoy our company no matter what, no matter what we think, no matter who we are. All right, so God bless you all. Have a good night. Ciao.